sir can i share the screen sir yes sir you can sir i've sir, given the uh, i mean you can share sir sir it is uh, i'm getting a message that host to disable the participants uh, no, 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 just now you can check it sir because uh, every day we are uh, using the same thing yes sir yes sir now it is okay sir. okay okay I hope the screen is visible, sir. Yes, sir. But you can uh, switch into, I mean, full screen. Ah, uh, slide. Yes. So I can. <clears throat> excuse me. I welcome all the leaders. First of all, I want to thank the institution. i want to thank the coordinator uh, jagdish varan sir for uh, taking efforts for organizing this lecture so i feel happy to be a part of this session uh, since because this preparation has made me to think rethink it has made me to inspire as a leader has given me more inputs it has changed my mindset especially while i was listening to more uh, videos i was going through a lot of books for uh, preparation it has helped helped me a lot personally i believe in leaders especially so let us start with this quote by peter drucker he has mentioned that only three things happen naturally in an organization or institution that is friction confusion and underperformance and everything else requires leadership so as leaders we can assure that in the place where we are there won't be friction there won't be confusion and there won't be underperformance with this positive note let us move again with this title resilient mindset choice of a leader as you all know leadership is dynamic leaders are dynamite as you people know that india has more intellectual people even world at world level we have more intellectual people and there are scarcity for leaders there are scarcity for true leaders so in this regard we have to thank the organizers for organizing this wonderful fdp on leadership so india needs leadership india needs a true leader world needs a true leader for transforming people's goals vision mission and etc so with this not let us move forward <clears throat> first thing is that we talk about self confidence wherever we go we talk about self confidence i hope most of the experts would have given inputs about self confidence yes. the thing is that what we have to do in order to acquire self confidence where it is available so what we have to do in order, in order to get self confidence self confidence self confidence it is to be literal yes. self confidence it, it is nothing but believing in oneself self belief so at times we struggle a lot with this component called self confidence when something happens negative a level of self confidence will drastically come down when something happens as per plan and if everything goes well we we'll have a upper seat and we feel that we are more confident we are more self confident so first thing what we have to do in order to get self confident is that we have to feel good about ourselves we should not bother about the comments of others we should not bother about the criticisms please make a note we can bother about constructive crit criticisms we should not care we should not bother about destructive criticisms which drains our energy which drains our self confidence so we have to listen to people who really as intention of getting things done in a positive manner first thing is that we have to feel good about ourselves so if we start feeling good about ourselves we'll try to accept responsibilities 
when we feel good about ourselves it will not let us alone it will make us to accept more responsibilities in my case personally i want to take myself as an example for this when i started believing myself when i started believing good about myself i tend to accept more responsibilities willingly and voluntarily i used to go to people i used to i used to go to my higher officials to ask for responsibilities so most of the times responsibilities runs towards us in many of the cases we have to run towards the responsibilities we can't wait till the responsibility reaches us we can't wait until others identify us that we are apt for this we are eligible for this we have to prove ourselves that i am more capable and i have more credentials for proving it so first thing is we have to feel good about ourselves second thing is we have to accept responsibilities we should not be a mere spectator alone by clapping hands so we have to involve involve ourselves in many of the cases in most of the toughest task and all so what will happen if we start feeling good about ourselves and we have we have started accepting responsibilities the next thing will be we will tend to improve our skills without knowing that we are improving since because accepting the responsibilities will bring all good things to us of course we'll be getting more bad experiences also so it is we cannot call it as bad experiences we have to call it as experience so this is how we have to look into responsibilities this is how we have to look into different toughest task so first we have to feel good about ourselves if we start feeling good we'll accept the responsibilities and if we accept responsibilities we will improve our skills this is what it is going to make us more dynamic this is what it is going to make us more self self oriented con self uh, confidence self inflicted people and so on <clears throat> so who is a leader so i'll give a few seconds for you people to think about who is a leader so this definition differs from person to person as far as myself is concerned i won't go by definitions i won't believe that this definition is right and this definition is wrong so we have all the eligibility to define things on our own so that there is nothing called right and there is nothing called wrong so i'll leave the choice to the leaders who is a leader what could be the qualities of a leader what could be the traits of a leader do we have any uh, fixed definition for leaders yes you can come out with the definition called communication is more important for a leader and even you can go uh, to say that intellectual component is what requires to be a leader and so on you can you can mention that self confidence is a important right for a leader but to be frank and to be in the level of acceptance i will mention that resilience it is what required to be a leader so resilience might be a single component which combines all other components which compounds all other components whether it could be an intellectual component whether it could be a communication skill whether it could be a team building skill whatever it is if so we want to climb up the ladder with the intellectual intellectual component what we have if so we want to climb up the ladder with the communication skills we have if we want to climb up with the ladder by the team building ability of ourselves so in order to manage all those skills we need resilience you can find people with more intellectual component you can find people with the ability to communicate excellently you can find people who can work excellently in a team but in my personal experience also as a leader i'm holding different posts as a leader even i i used to, i used to work as a subordinate in in other uh, committees and uh, cells also 
so this is what it has made me to think about leadership the one component that is resilience so even uh, you people can ask about what do you mean by resilience is there any fixed definition for resilience i hope by this time when i pronounce the word resilience you people you would have started getting more definitions by yourself you would have started thinking to get more meaning for resilience so as i said earlier there is no fixed definition of meaning for a word even you can call it a self confidence you can call it as perseverance and persistence so to make more literal we need to read what is resilience it is nothing but the ability to adapt to challenging situations if we have adapted ourselves in challenging situations we can call that as resilience the next one next component is that a particular pattern of attitudes and skills that helps us to be resilient by surviving and thriving under stress if we people we know how to manage stress we know we need if we know how to cope up with stress if we know how to proceed in spite of having more stress that is known as resilience so this picture is two of the pictures may look very simple may look very literal the picture which i have given in the left top corner is my most favorite picture most of you you people would have seen this during your uh, childhood days this picture is very famous in tamil especially in Th tanjore the quality of this picture quality of this dog is that whatever might be the direction you pull it it will bounce back to its normal position even you can pull it from front front side back side and sideways it will reach to its normal position please think about this doll for a moment if we have such an attitude how it would be yes naturally god has gifted us such an attitude but because of certain situations because of certain people because of certain uh, preoccupied thought process we are not in a position to bounce back this word sounds more dynamic to me this word sounds more meaningful to me so i have given uh, a caption uh, under the word bounce back you can fall seven times but we have to stand up eight times this is the japanese pro proverb which has influenced me a lot yes i too i have encountered a lot of failures personally i too i have encountered a lot of failures professionally i won't call them as failures i will rather i will call them as experiences but personally i feel that i have the capacity to do, to bounce back irrespective of the situation irrespective of the task irrespective of the opponent i feel that i can bounce back this is the single component what we have to teach our students this has to be the component we have to teach to our subordinates leader you can teach them how to communicate you can teach them how to work you can teach them how to write a letter above all we have to teach them how to bounce back if we teach this properly all other components will tend to grow because there are setbacks in communication there are setbacks in team work there are setbacks in all the works irrespective of the domain even we have more setbacks personally so we should have the ability to bounce back so it keeps the momentum going it keeps us to move forward by having a will power to move towards the desired goals and objectives so why is the resilience is more important why is that we are talking about resilience now why is that i have titled the topic as the resilient mindset choice of a leader resilience cannot be a chance it has to be a choice i don't bother about other skills like i have mentioned earlier about communication about the team building skills and so on 
I have a strong belief on resilience. I, I will tell this often since because I want to make a point that this single word resilience has brought me more laurels to me. It has brought me to the stage where I am now. If I would not have resilience, I would have been nowhere. I would have been in the stage far below when compared to the stage where what I am now. So we need to think why is that we need resilience? Why do we have to study about resilience? Why we have to listen about resilience? First point is that it keeps us on track. Most of the cases we used to derail from the track. We used to move towards the different location which is totally opposite from our vision and mission. So if we are resilient enough, it keeps us on track. The next thing is it gives us strength. Do we need strength to move forward? To move forward to achieve the desired results? Yes, without having any doubt, it gives us en enormous strength. Irrespective of the setbacks, irrespective of the uh, difficult situation what we encounter, it gives, gives us more strength to proceed. The next thing is that it makes our purpose bigger. No, sir. At times, yes, sir. I will once again talk to the students. Then I... Sorry. It makes us purpose bigger. What do you mean by that? It makes our purpose bigger. At times, we used to give more importance to our problems. We used to give more importance to the setbacks. We used to give important, more important to the people who discourages us, who criticizes us. So during that situations, we have to think about the purpose. Why is that we have taken up this task? What is that we are going to achieve if we are going to make this successful? What is it I'm going to get? Is it name, fame? No. It is the experience, what you are going to get by achieving the task is more important than the name and fame. It is all about experiences. It is not that what you get by achieving your goals is important. It is what you become by achieving your goals is more important. What you have achieved today, you might lose, you might lose it tomorrow. But the experiences, what you have gained by achieving, by the process through which you have achieved, the process through which you have achieved the purpose that won't let you down. So we have to rely on the purpose. When the task becomes more tougher, when the enemy becomes more greater, the purpose is the single component which keeps us driving. The next thing is take charge. If we are resilient, we won't go and keep on complaining about the circumstances. We won't go on to complain about friends, relatives, and parents. We won't complain about our age, gender, caste, religion, whatever it is. We will take charge for both our, for our victories and for our defeats. This has to be the important component for being resilient. When you accept that you are the reason for your failure, when you accept that you are the reason for your victory, this is what it is going to make me uh, make you as a leader. It is going to make us excellent leaders, dynamic leaders. We should not blame others for our setbacks. If we are resilient, we will take charge of our entire life. The last one is that to look different. How is that being resilient will look different? Is it because of the formal dress? Is it because of the kind of makeup we have? What is that? It is going to make us different. Being different is not in the form of physical uh, structure. Being different is that how we look at the things. So how is that we are going to build resilience? Is it, is it possible to build resilience? 
uh, in that whether it is inborn a quality or it is a quality which we can learn in between even the, you may have this question but to be resilient to give a resilient answer i used to tell that it is a learnable habit even psychologically or scientifically the people may prove that it is not learnable habit i rely on this component i rely on this mindset that anything is learnable whatever might be the domain whatever might be the skill it is learnable if we are determined enough if you are strong enough to learn something it is learnable it all depends on the purpose if the purpose is bigger definitely you will learn new things if the purpose is very small it is impossible for us to learn new things so how is that we are going to build resilience so i have identified this as the first step to build resilience we need to accept change as i mentioned the points will look more literal points may look more simple but it is more powerful at times powerful things looks normal powerful things look very small so what is that we have why is that we have to accept change so we can classify change into two types one is planned and one is unplanned most of the cases we don't have to bother about the planned change since because we would have we would have anticipated it earlier we would have planned for it so we won't feel rejected or dejected in most of the cases if the planned change goes in the opposite direction so in most of the cases the change happens in an unplanned manner especially being a leader we have to encounter more changes unplanned changes we have to introspect ourselves that do we have the mindset to accept change this question we have to ask ourselves so what kind of feeling when we get when things go wrong change means it is not i i don't mean about the physical change change of place change of mindset change of friendship change of team members change in a plan change in the uh, competitors level so change is the component which gives us everything it is a component which forces out forces ourselves out of a comfort zones because life begins outside the comfort zone life starts after the comfort zone in most of the cases we stay in a comfort zones and we expect great things to happen it is impossible if we expect great things to happen we have to do great things if we expect only normal we can do normal things that is more than sufficient to get normal results if the results has to be massive we have to give massive efforts it is simple rule being resilient first thing is that we should accept changes the picture what i have shown in the slide the picture of cocoon transforming into a butterfly since because the cocoon is ready to change it the butterfly it can transform as a butterfly in, and it can fly with different colors the first thing what we have to do to be resilient is that we should not have any kind of reservations towards change we should embrace change we should welcome changes as blessings in most of the cases we look changes as devils sir are you there in the meet i mean zoom
Can others hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you, but okay. I can't hear sir's voice. Okay, I think he has some network issues. Okay. He might rejoin again. Yes, sir has rejoined. You can, sir, please continue, sir. So, stands for the results. How stands? Sir, am I audible? Yes, sir. You are. You are audible. Sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. So, this slide tells us we have to find a sense of purpose. This uh, circle has been coined by Simon Sinek. It talks about the results. It talks about the process, and it talks about the cause, the purpose. What we do, how we do is not important. Why we do is more important. Why is that we have enrolled ourselves in this for this FDP? How is that we have enrolled for this FDP is not important. Why is that I have enrolled for this FDP is more important than how and what? You can practice this. I used to practice this circle in most of the cases. I used to ask students, why is that you have joined this course. Why is that you have to take up the course? Why is that you have to do your undergraduate degree? How you do and what you do is not important. Why is that you produce this product? How is that and what is that is a minimum attribute? Why is that is the predominant attribute which keeps the most of the organizations to move forward? Please ask this question. What is your why? Why is that I want to lead? Why is that I want to act as a leader? Do we have any definite why's for a purpose? Do we have any definite why's, why's for a profession? Even you can ask me why is that you want to be, why is that you are uh, staying as a lecturer? Why is that you want to become a policeman or why is that you want to become a prime minister of india why has to be the predominant factor since because why is the component which keeps us moving forward it keeps the momentum it won't let us down so we have to focus on why the next component is that we have to cultivate relationships why is that we have to cultivate relationships Especially uh, to be resilient, we are not superheroes to do everything on our own. This should be the important component. While cultivating relationships, we have to be very cautious to find people who has the same mindset as we have. Same mindset in the sense, I don't mean the intellectual component, the mindset of us, the what kind of goals I have planned, what kind of goals I have? The circle should be the people with the same mindset. For example, I have a mindset to become a businessman and I surround myself with the people who has the mindset of becoming nothing. It is damn sure that I can't become a businessman. If I want to become a businessman, I should surround myself with people who has the same mindset. Especially, we should not hesitate to ask for help, to seek help. We should have mentors, we should have role models to whom we can bring up, we can get suggestions. At times when we feel rejected, dejected, it gives us more strength, it gives us a clarity towards our purpose. We have to cultivate relationships. Cultivate, the word meaning is more important. Definitely we'll be having more relationships, but have, have we started cultivating it? Have we started recognizing the relationships? Next component is that 
we should become a continuous learner there is a quote graduated yesterday stops learning today will become an illiterate tomorrow so being leaders we should not stop learning at any point of time we should adapt ourselves for different transformation with which happens around the world let it be technology let it be any uh, new skill set let it be any challenging environment daily we have to learn something we need to read something so it is a single component which tells us that we are alive we have to learn continuously we have to improve ourselves so that we can introspect ourselves next one is that being proactive so this is one of the seven habits mentioned by mentioned in the book called seven habits of highly effective people i i hope that you people would have heard this component being proactive what is um, being proactive when we have to talk about being proactive we have to talk about the component called reactive in most of the cases we people are reactive we are, we react to people we react to situations what is being proactive the first point what we have seen today will correlate with this point first point is that we have to accept change and this one is being proactive if we should be in a position to accept change we should be proactive so we get all the powers to accept the change by being proactive we should keep ourselves ready whatever might be the challenge whatever might be the task whatever whoever might be the component opponent whatever might be the competition we should keep ourselves ready this is what proactive is all about the excuse word may look more colorful it looks only colorful in this slide but it is not colorful so to be resilient we should eliminate the excuses even i have seen myself giving more excuses for my delay in the work the work assigned to me we will we'll come out with colorful excuses we are good in giving blame excuses being a leader being a resilient leader we are not supposed to give unwanted excuses because excuses are devils in disguise excuses are pitfalls in disguise excuses are enemies in disguise we can't move forward by having i priority mindset or i aiming at massive goals by having a struct component called excuse most of the people they have planned for uh, massive success they have high goals they have great goals also but something is pulling us behind most probably the component would be excuses we are not supposed to give excuses so how to practice resilience is it practicable is it practicable with the help of a subconscious brain so you can take most of the motivational books for example most of the psychological books for example they would have talked about the component called subconscious mind so it is the root cause for everything subconscious brain subconscious mind all the motivational authors all the psychologists would have talked about subconscious brain but in a different dimensions but in a different angle the end of any textbook which talks about motivation which talks about uh, achievement which talks about procrastination which talks about goals at the end they would have talked about subconscious brain so we have to train our subconscious brain to be more resilient i hope you would, you would have listened to this tt rangarajan author of editor of infinite thoughts 
he has given this idea he has mentioned that our subconscious brain doesn't understand whether the thought is negative or positive whether the emotions are negative or positive it understands only whether the emotions or thoughts are deep or shallow if the emotions are deep whether it is positive emotional response or negative emotional response your our subconscious brain accepts it without any question of doubt whether it is positive or negative if the emotions are shallow it rejects in most of the cases this would have happened in our behavior our subconscious would have accepted most of the deep emotions and it would have rejected most of the shallow emotions so what we have to do if anything good happens if anything negative happens we have to intellectually analyze we should not feel dejected or rejected we have to sit either individually or with the team we have to analyze intellectually and we have to talk about the negatives or setbacks or pitfalls only in one sentences we are not to talk more than one sentences about the pitfalls since because we are going to in- analyze intellectually so what about if anything goes positive what about if anything good happens we have to connect emotionally with the happiness we have to connect ourselves emotionally with the positive thing which has happened to us so we have to talk in sentences all together we have to talk about the good things to most of the people irrespective of number of times we have to talk again and again and again this is something called gratitude what we talk more we are if we talk about the negative things if we talk about the things which has happened to us negatively this is going to happen again and again and again as a matter of attitude we have to talk about our blessings we have to talk about our good deeds what has happened to us so it tend to give us the uh, as you people know what we talk we are what we think we are if we talk positive things we are going to get positives in abundance if we are going to talk about negative we are going to get only the negative component so i have given uh, two directions one indicates winners don't do different things they do things differently you would have you would have listened this many number of times in most of the welcome addresses in most of the what of thanks in most of the mcs they would have read this word winners don't do different things they do things differently but i have coined a different notion that leaders don't see different things they see things differently this is what it makes the leader to do things differently if we can able to see things differently we will be in a position to do things differently so we uh, this slide helps us to introspect ourselves so what could be the mindset when we get a new task when our boss or our superior assigns us a new task what could be the first immediate reaction when we are assigned with the new task whether it is tough or not what could be a reaction uh, probably why a... are we chosen for this particular task or why did he yes, choose ma'am. us for this particular task okay so this is what it comes to your mind am i right ma'am yes also along with that it comes what uh, to be very honest um, okay. how can it help me personally okay. uh, what can it benefit to me what can mm-hmm. i be able to learn probably this happens as step 2 because after he explains the task in detail okay okay so you have started uh, 
looking life in a different uh, perspective so that is why you look for opportunities in a, whatever the task is whether the task yes. is new or the task is old you are looking for opportunities you are yes. looking for the ways through which you can improve ourselves so you don't reject the responsibilities you have a welcoming effect for the new task which was assigned to you yes so i appreciate that attitude ma'am thank you so much sir really it is a, a motivating uh, question motivating answer for me thank you so much sir thank, thank you, you sir and as far as my idea goes when we assigned with the new task there are two options one is to feel confident that i will succeed one is to feel that i am not confident the ma'am has said i will think why is that i have assigned this task what qualities i have what kind of reliability i have in order to complete the task this was the uh, answer given by the ma'am who has answered for this question so it looks more positive when we have a negative mindset we used to think i am not confident why is that they have assigned me there are more number of people in my team why is that Uh, the boss or uh, the leader was assigned me alone with this, this task so we have to see task as blessings tasks as opportunities for improving our skills we have more over that we have to think that when someone assigns us with the task we have to feel proud that we have proved something great we we would have lived up to the expectations of the boss or a team leader so which has made him or her to assign the new task so being resilient when we get a new task it will make us to think i am confident that i will succeed i don't bother about the task i don't bother about the intensity of the task i don't bother about the, about the toughness of the task i don't bother about the team whom i am going to work with i don't know i don't know and i don't bother about the competitors whom i am going to compete with so we have options to decide yes it is purely a choice we can choose whether to think confident that you will succeed or i don't think i am confident that i will achieve next question is that how we look at failures first one is on a new task second one is on a failure so we so feel failure. depressed if we fail we feel very okay. depressed upset um, okay but a motivated person if somebody motivates you and tap you at your back okay you can do it again then we'll try it okay very good ma'am very good first initially we feel rejected initially yes rejected okay. we also uh, have a loss of our self confidence uh, probably in the near future uh, we would think twice when we take up any decisions if they are to be taken or probably the way we are going to accomplish a task given okay or a regular task uh, we would be uh, obviously losing our self confidence we will lose self confidence initially as you said if we are motivated person we'll get our confidence back we'll bounce back from a failure so there is a book written by john maxwell titled sometime we win and sometimes we learn we would have accept we would have expected him to title as sometimes we win and sometimes we lose instead of that he has titled it as sometimes we win and sometimes we learn so opposite of winning is learning it is not failure so it is all how we see at failures that is what leaders are made we don't do different things we see things differently how we look at the new task how we look at the failures so as mentioned in the previous slide we have two options to look at failures to consider it as a learning opportunity to consider it as an experience or to lose hope obviously in most of the cases we will lose hope 
the ma'am has mentioned the word motivated but we can't keep on looking for motivation outside all the times we will not find people to tap from our back to motivate ourselves to motivate us so it has to come from within that is called as inspiration the next level to motivation is inspiration motivate motivation is something which comes from others inspiration is something which arises from ourselves which arises within at initial stages we may look for motivation but when years passes we have to be inspired we have to go with inspiration which comes from within next is that how is that we look at difficulties failure is different from difficulty so first of all when it is a difficult thing uh, you judge your own uh, capability whether i could do or not okay is it up to my uh, i mean uh, up to my capacity or not difficulty and okay, well, uh, okay. for a moment uh, you feel that uh, uh, okay like uh, then you take a choice uh, you think twice or thrice and then you take a choice whether to go ahead or not okay fine ma'am very good it helps us to introspect ourselves it helps us to measure our caliber it helps us to measure our uh, skill set it helps us to measure our level of confidence difficulties comes to us not to uh, feel not to make us feel bad it does it has come to us to identify who we are only at times of difficulty we will identify the real potential of our, ourselves not at the time of happiness not at the time when everything goes fine when every everything goes as planned we can't identify who we are in most of the cases in difficult times we identify who we are after identifying it helps us to move on sir you are not audible sir yes ma'am let, let us wait sir am i audible yes yes you are sir yes sir so we when we encounter a difficulty we have two choices whether to give up or not to give up being a resilient i don't have to tell you people that which one we would have been chosen we would have gone for never give up attitude this is what resilience is all about irrespective of the age irrespective of our position irrespective of gender irrespective of anything we should not give up if the task is worth spending if something is worth suffering we should not give up in most of the cases we give up at things even when the difficulties are small setbacks are small failures are small we give up being resilient we are not supposed to do that so i i have uh, five different types of responses where and we have to respond where and when we are not supposed to respond most of the things most of the bad things happens because of the wrong choice of the response more most of the good things happens because of the right choice of responses so that the, there are five categories of responses one is over response the second one is under response next one is delayed response next one is no response and the last one is opposite response whatever happens in our life we can respond only in those five ways over under delayed no and opposite responses what is over response by looking at this picture you people would have understood what is over response when something when someone says something which angers us 
we will over respond by physical or verbal attacking so this is what over response is all about we will respond in a different manner we will respond either in a way of physical abuse or uh, verbal attack we are not supposed to over respond whatever might be the provocation if we are confident if we are resilient we will not over respond and also we are not supposed to over respond at times of fear anxiety and panic because it it will give us more bad results if we over respond when we are in a state of fear when we are in a state of anxiety or in a state of confusion or panic if we choose to over respond in those situations or circumstances probably it is a wrong choice it it never gives us a solution it intensifies the problem being a resilient leader we are not supposed to intensify the problem we have to intensify the energy level of ourselves as well as the team members we have to motivate our team members we are not supposed to demotivate so we are not respond we are not supposed to over respond to our team members we are not supposed to over respond to our superiors or subordinates over it is so we have to practice where and when to over respond and where and when not to over respond next one is under response just opposite to over response you can retain the option of applying increasingly pressure later if needed so by choosing to be under responsive we'll get ample time to think to introspect to analyze things what has happened to us so that under response gives us control under response gives us power to come back powerfully it is not that in it is not that in all the cases we have to over respond at times we have to learn to under response only few situations arises where we have to over respond in most of the cases we will be encountered with the situations where where we would have responded with this option called under response next two delay response a bit lower than under response best results can be obtained by considering all possible alternatives throughout your entire life you, we will be confronted with very few emergencies where we have to react instantly but but in most of the cases we would have reacted we would have responded immediately which 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 would have brought more problems to us which would have brought more difficulties to us which which would have inflicted the problems which would have aggravated the problem to a different level so delayed response it is not an advocacy of procrastination so at times people may call the people who respond in a delayed manner they we used to call them as procrastinators it is not that we have to respond in a delayed manner all the time few people they used to respond all the times in a delayed manner that time you can call them as procrastinators if you need time to think if you need time to respond we can label it as delayed response it is not an advocacy of reaching decisions of it is an advocacy of reaching reaching decisions by considering all possible alternatives if you need time to think if you need to decide to go with which alternative it is better to go with delayed response next one is no response the art of doing nothing successfully it is the art of letting things go down we invite our troubles by two actions because of unnecessary involvement or much worse over involvement 
unnecessary involvement and much worse over involvement the next one is unnecessary reactions and much worse over reactions if we choose not to over react in a different in a wrong environment in a wrong place we would have settled most of the troubles we should know where to respond we should know where to react there is a massive difference between being reactive and being uh, responsive it is entirely different being reactive and being responsive is entirely different we used to respond in the place where we where should we should have responded or reacted we used to react in the place where we should have responded next thing is that art of doing unexpected things surprisingly this is known as opposite response what is that laughter is the declaration of superiority over whatever befalls you it requires a strong heart it requires a strong will power to laugh when we encounter failure to laugh when we are encountered with the difficult or uh, toughest situations it if you make up your mind to be happy you must make up your mind to respond to unpleasantness with an opposite response of pleasantness it is all depends upon the choices what we make if we choose to be happy if we choose to be resilient we should know how to respond to unpleasant things we should know how to respond to difficult situations we should know how to respond to failures and criticism as well so i would like to consolidate the word resilience in the single slide so i don't want to take much of your time to talk more about this resilience i think and i hope so this single slide will help us to learn what the resilience what resilience is the first point it has given a great source of inspiration inspiration to me don't know how to do but surely i know i am going to do it when you ask a child are you going to do are you are you going to do this are you are going to make it happen they will respond that i don't know how to do but i know that i am going to do it up i am going to make it up this should be the choice of a resilient leader forget about how we are going to do what we are going to do but we should understand we should have guts we should have a belief that we are going to make things happen forget about the criticism forget about the people who pulls you down forget about the people who lets you down always we need to have the mindset that i am going to make it happen next thing is that we have to keep the momentum going so the whatever might be the task when we in, in the initial stages is we will have the will be we used to be too fast in the things what we proceed with but in the later stages when we encounter setbacks when we encounter a failure we lose momentum this is one of the point mentioned by john maxwell in his book named 21 laws of leadership we have to keep a momentum going we should not others to slow down us we have to decide the speed in which we have to travel since because we know where to go how to go how long to go so it is not that we should not make others to decide the speed of us since because we are the creators of our own destiny we have to decide the speed we should keep the momentum going we should not allow others to decide who we are in most of the cases we go by reputations what is reputation what others think about us are myself what others think about me is it is termed as reputation what i think about myself is character so at times we used to fight with this component called character and reputation 
when other when others praises us will fly with confidence when others criticizes us we used to feel rejected dejected because we don't believe in our character we believe in the words of others we believe in the kind of reputation what we get from others so being resilient we are not supposed to rely on the reputation we have to rely on our character even we have to decide who we are we have to label who we are don't allow others to label us don't allow others to decide what we are next one is whatever we do whatever we learn whatever might be the conference whatever how many uh, whatever might be the numbers some people may ask will it change my destination you can be damn sure that it cannot change our destination overnight but when we decide to do it it will change the direction we can change the direction over it is more important to change the direction it is more important to change the mindset when we change the direction it is almost done it is half done if the direction is good if the direction leads you to greater destination where we will get more happiness where we will get more success the destination is right we can't change things overnight it is not we can't expect something magical to happen in our life to change things like this we have to wait being a resilient leader we have to wait we should not jump into conclusions we are not supposed to conclude most of the negative things happen because of wrong judgments because of wrong conclusions because of rushing towards labeling things immediately labeling things so we are not supposed to do that being a resilient leader and the fifth point is that it is not over until i win this should be the mantra when we encounter failure this should be the mantra when we feel tired this should be the mantra when others criticize us this should be the mantra when things go tough this should be the mantra when things go as not planned by us so we used to tell this mantra it is not over until i win what does it mean i am not done i am not given up i am going to proceed irrespective of the fear irrespective of the nature of the difficulty irrespective of nature of the task i am going to proceed by telling that it is not over until i win i will move forward i will keep my momentum going so to tell my student has helped me in coming uh, the mental deafness mental deafness is different we keep our ears mentally closed so that we won't listen to others we won't listen to the suggestions constructive suggestions even it is better to be mentally deaf to negative criticisms to destructive feedbacks but not during constructive feedbacks not during valuable suggestions from our subordinates or superiors whatever and whoever it might be we are supposed to be mentally tough especially towards our goals towards our destination towards the task which we are we need to be mentally tough not mentally deaf so uh, 
I, I need to close a bit early and uh, we can have a discussion. I, I think that I'm good at answering questions than giving uh, long presentations. And I rely on giving under slides stating that it, it won't happen. It is better to talk. It is better to interact the ways in which we are going to make things happen. So if you have any questions, we can uh, have the rest of the session as an interactive session where you can ask questions so that it will make me to feel more uh, confident. It will make me to learn different things. Great leaders, great leaders ask great questions. So I, I, I'm waiting to listen more uh, from the leaders. Sir? Yes, we are all leaders. Yes, ma'am. Uh, sir, at times we try and try, but still we don't get success. Okay. Okay. And at that moment, you find it up. It is not my cup of tea. And you leave it. Okay. So what we have to do in such a situation, or you can, or, or definitely people's, I mean, people's intention is that it is not my luck or it is not my day. After trying it for a number of times also. So in that situation, uh, what a person can do in order to again build up confidence, self-confidence. Okay. Ma'am, uh, as far as my knowledge goes, the word confidence and the word resilience or perseverance, it is different. Giving a try at once, it is confident. But as you were mentioning, we fail again and again, again and again, and we keep on trying. This shows that we are resilient. This shows that we are perseverance. We are uh, persistence. So as you were mentioning now, in most of the cases, we fail again and again. You are asking whether we need to drop that or we need to proceed with it. Most that of the, is, as far as my knowledge goes, ma'am, in most of the cases would have happened by deciding the wrong fit for us. First thing is we would have decided a wrong fit for us. Next thing is that we would have not understood the real, the potentials of ourselves. Or we need to ask ourselves, are we really passionate about that? Being passionate and being professional, it is different. I may be in a different profession, but my passion would be different. I will be willing to do anything for my passion, but I won't be doing anything for my profession. Unless otherwise, if my passion is my profession, I will look passion and profession in a different ways. If the task is our passion, we would do anything. Ma'am, it is not that what we get by achieving our goals. How and what we become by achieving our goals. There is a uh, quote by Les Brown. Aim for stars, even if you miss, sorry, aim for the moon, even if you miss, you will land on stars. So we should aim high. Even at the beginning, starting point, we have to aim high. If we, even if we fail, we will land somewhere higher. We should not sacrifice or we should not settle down in the bottom, in the initial stages itself. Uh, Ratan Tata used to tell this man. There is a survey on uh, uh, Bill Gates. The question is that what will happen if we make Bill Gates a zero? If we get all the wealth from Bill Gates and if we, what will happen if we are going to make him stand? Nothing. This is the case study. Man. What will happen to Bill Gates if he becomes zero, if he has lost all the money, he has, he has not, he has lost all, all the wealth. 
the survey finding is that within 10 years of time he will bounce back to the same old position where he was it is not that what money has earned it is not that what wealth he has accumulated it is the experience what has made him to reach that position so we don't have to bother whether we accomplish the task or not ma'am we have to feel gratified we have to feel happy what it has made us in the process through which by making an attempt am i clear ma'am yes sir yes sir thank okay. you thank you uh hello sir uh, may i yes ma'am yes ma'am uh so i just wanted to add some more points uh, uh with uh, whatever the ma'am asked about it uh, sure. actually sir what happened no like there are so many things which are not in our hand okay means though we have tried a lot we have, we have given the best shot we are passionate about it but some situations are not in our hand means sometimes uh, it is depending on the policy or the you know the uh, environmental factors whatever it may be so in that situation how to uh, will will means uh, how to uh, behave in that situation means uh, how can we become a cool and calm in that particular scenario that is what i just wanted to okay, ask you sir okay yeah. ma'am very good yeah yeah ma'am actually uh, you made half of my presentation ma'am i forgot to give and i forgot to to mention this point that okay. you are talking about the external circumstances you are yes. you are talking about the external things Yes, sir. Yes. Being resilient, we are not supposed to think more about the external things, ma'am. If we dwell on the things which happens out of our hands, we are not resilient. Resilient leaders will focus on the internal things. Will focus on the things which is in our hands. If possible, we can try to make the external things suitable for us, but not at all the situations. But not. in all the times we can make the external environment suitable or external environment work for us so we don't we don't have to bother too much about the external environment external things man only few things happens because of the external environment many things happens because of the internal environment mm mm-hmm. we uh, in not i'm not uh, blaming anyone ma'am in most of the cases we used to blame the external environment yes sir yes even i have blamed many number of times i i have seen people blaming their age their their gender mm. their family yes. background mm. their financial position <clears throat> the area in which they have uh, brought up born and brought up so we most of the cases most of the people they used to have external environments a scapegoat it is easy to blame the external environment instead we should blame ourselves we have we have a great potentials in our in us instead of focusing on the external environment we would have focused more on the internal environment so being resilient man we don't have to think more about the external environment but doing business or uh, mingling with the team it depends many things on the external environment also mm-hmm. okay In, okay uh, the leader who is not resilient so uh, may i yes mm-hmm. ma'am so that means uh, you say that to be a resilient leader uh, it is more important that we focus on ourselves rather uh, being affected by the external environment right yes ma'am we need to accept that things may go wrong in the external uh, situations so even I internal have a component is not yes ma'am uh, yes sir please 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 continue yes, even internal things it is not in our hands it is beyond our capacity and capability it is okay. it depends upon the skill set it depends upon the mindset mm-hmm. even the internal environment is in such cases external environment is totally uncertain okay yes ma'am uh, what is your uh, point ma'am uh, yeah my query uh, sorry sir my yes, query ma'am. is uh, when i started my career as a um, headmistress i mean i'm still the headmistress um, i i still have a team of four under me for a pre primary section so as uh, when you are given this opportunity of leading a team at a very young age without an experience 
you um, are unsure of the way you are going to lead the team. And in this course, um, in people management skills, when you lack, there are a lot of mistakes that you do. So again, when you're working with the same team, and now when you are wanting to, uh, you know, um, overcome or rectify whatever you have done in the past, and you want the confidence from the team, then how do uh, we uh, work towards that? How do we manage to get in to, uh, I understood the entire uh, presentation or the things that you told, but when we talk about uh, working in a team or working as a team, how do you assure uh, your team members that yes, they are important for you now? Uh, wherein you have obviously in every team you will have one or the uh, one or two people who are um, always of not the like mindset and they tend to pull uh, these people of the like mindset towards their end right so how do we overcome these uh, situations okay ma'am uh, you have given a nice case study ma'am uh, which i will add in my library so that when I give a presentation in, in a, any other forum, I can use this as a case study, ma'am. So yes, I've learned ma this. Ma'am, uh, in your case, mm -hmm. to uh, move as an individual or to move as a team, as I mentioned earlier, we have to make the why more bigger, ma'am. Uh -huh. Bigger okay. in the sense, we have to sit with our team, we have to discuss why is that we have to work as a team. You have, you have to ask questions to your subordinates. Why is that we have to work as a team? Why is that we have assigned a task? What mm -hmm. is it we are going to get? If we identify mm -hmm. why is that we have to work? Do we work for ourselves or do we work for the betterment of the students community? Mm -hmm. So teaching is even we call it as a service. First, we have to fill our pocket so that we can uh, make the students work towards their achievements and towards their uh, accomplishments. Yes. As you were mentioning, ma'am, definitely there will be one or two who do doesn't align with you, who doesn't support you. It happens in all the institutions, in all the teams. But we are not supposed to bother about the one single member who collapses the entire uh, environment, rather we can focus on the majority of the group who helps us in making the team more successful, who helps us in making the team to reach the different greatest heights. So you have to make the why So most of the institutions and most of the why so is that you know. they are working? Am I audible, ma'am? Now it is clear, sir. In the middle, yeah, yeah, there was a, yeah. a lapse. Yes, ma'am. So in most of the cases, most of the institutions and most of the organizations, they are not clear with their why. We mm -hmm. would have mentioned in our st uh, objective statement. We would have made clear in our mission statement, our objective statement. But none of us bother about the objective statement or mission statement, which is there in the walls, which is there in the posters. Correct. If the purpose, purpose has to bind together, ma'am, especially as a team, we have to sit and talk a lot, ma'am. Mm -hmm. We have to talk a lot, especially in the teaching industry, we have to talk a lot. We have to uh, do a case study on every individual. We have to find ways through which we can make an employee to work who is demotivated. Okay. We have to talk a lot. We have to do a small research on the people. In most of the cases, we motivate in a wrong way, ma'am, actually. I have done it many number of times. We should identify the key to motivate every individual. It is not that one key fits for all. One key fits all. Because everyone, we are individuals. We will be having preoccupied mindset. 
we will have different goals even we work in an uh, same environment same setup in a same team our why will be different if you ask me i will tell that why is that i work here in an institution i tell that i want to make students more brighter i want to make my students more courageous i want to make my students more confident but if you ask someone they will tell that i want to make my student more intellectually great so we have to decide we have to come to a conclusion and we have to keep the why of the department why of the institution in a bigger way we have to magnify the why instead of focusing on the vision mission and objectives let us make it simple and we have to revolve around the why daily we have to talk about the why man okay. it is nothing wrong talking for few minutes daily in the morning about why is that we have we have to work today we used to talk what is that we have to complete daily in the morning we used to review the work what we have, what we have done yesterday we used to talk about the work what we have to complete today but we have to make this why first you put why first man the golden yes, circle will make miracles man uh so thank you so much with this uh, adding to that uh, okay. the team has no issues with um, is it normal for a person or for a uh, subordinate uh, if something is see as um, leaders we come in between the management connecting the teachers and the management right okay yeah. yes, so what happens is at times there are questions which come up to um when some some task is given to them uh, there is an immediate no response so no is it whom, uh, from the team somebody. sometimes uh, or mm -hmm. reasons or excuses as you say um so at that instance also putting a why and asking uh, or probably explaining how is it going to be beneficial to the children will that help the uh, you know task to be accomplished or a responsibility to be undertaken like you, you you mean that when you get a reply no from your subordinates see uh, there is a task which comes uh, from uh, from our seniors and that okay. needs to be going uh, given to the team of teachers at that instance what happens is they obviously in the uh, covid situation they are already burdened up with work so now there is another new task or a new responsibility that is that is coming up in this instance also when there is a dejection of taking up a responsibility you say that you tell them why or how is it going to benefit the children and then give them the task is that uh, answer the same for my Perfect. next question also ma'am uh, being in between we are like moderators we are like regulators whatever yes. might be the firing what uh, whatever might be the uh negative things from what we receive from the top management we can't pass the same thing to our subordinates yes so it is a uh, difficult task to be in between so it is impossible to balance also as you were mentioning ma'am especially in the covid situation this happens in all the institutions but to be frank ma'am uh, i have a team of 9 along with me we have a team of 10 don't know why this has happened ma'am i have i have not received the reply why sir you know it it might be because that i would have not allowed them to tell no it is not that i am claiming that i am superior i would not have allowed them to tell no but okay. i to talk up i do a lot i talk a lot of, uh, to the to my team members i will make them understand first even i get no in a different way they will tell that it is uh, tough they tell that it is quite difficult to do but they will not tell that they are not going to do it ma'am they they will not tell no because even they have all the rights to tell no in a different way even being a person who is in between the superiors and subordinates we have all the rights we should tell the management at times we have to tell no 
but you have you should know how to tell no successfully okay the, there is a, a quote called art of telling no successfully being resilient is also na we should not tell yes all the times some people are good in telling no all the time some people are putting in good in telling yes all the times but they will suffer later ma'am uh, yes uh, this requires a lot of uh, talking ma'am actually that's okay sir thank you so much for whatever insight you have given i believe you, uh, others might also have something to share i'm so sorry thank for you, others no no you have, you have made me to think in a different perspective also ma'am so it helped thank me to so do uh, and lead in a different way with my team Uh, thank, thank you so much. Thank you for your patience, ma'am. Thank you. Thank let you, thank me you. let me add as a former colleague, sir. I know him yes, personally. Yes, sir. You're most welcome, sir. Right. Uh, the things which he had said, I know uh, where we started because we were uh, associated earlier, you know, in a college. I know how the department started and how he was interested to lead the department. Yes, and uh, you might see the difference of his department students when compared with others. whatever he speaks he actually follows them you can uh, you can just identify there is an mb mib student who is headed by uh, dr s mohan raj sir and you can feel the difference there so whatever he speaks i have been uh, in contact with him for uh, uh, a long years i know how he acts with his subordinates as well as his students so whatever he uh, has given in the presentation is actually what he is following to my understanding thank you for yes, your compliment sir, sir. thank it, you sir thank uh, you. gives a great uh, source of strength also to me yes we we actually find this difference in uh, our students with his department students her student his students will be uh, leading the race wherever required they will take responsibilities on their own maybe it, it might have uh, been transformed from his leadership but it, it's actually uh, to be done among all students Thank you very much for your compliment, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm sorry I interrupted. The other no, 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 no. Others sir. can. Uh... It 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 is it is all the points to introspect ourselves, sir. So when we yes. get comments from you people, mm. it it I'll I'm going to pass the same uh, comment mm. to my students so that they'll feel motivated. Yes. And my department, the faculty members also, they'll become motivated when they get an uh, appreciation from their members, especially. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Any other questions, sir? Sir, uh, continue. Sir, sir, excuse me. Sir, Kadayan, sir, please you can ask. Uh, yes, sir. At present juncture, sir, there is a lot of problem faced by the faculty members. We are ready for all these things. Only that don't you say that don't blame anything, but it is a reality. What is the reality? The sir, network problem. Sir, excuse me, sir. Student problem. all these things only due to corona happening sir what's the solution sir we work lot we work lot we work lot for the welfare of the students but <laughs> actually what is that it is beyond our control sir what we asking what do, we have sir? to do during this situation sir ama sir what percent situation online class handling online class is a very tough situation Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, you say that uh, don't blame anything. Now, nah. how it is possible? Uh, at, uh, at present, I have a lot of problem for net problem and all these things as a professor. But yes, as sir. a student facing lot of problem, it is beyond our control. How to whom I blame, sir? Sir, I feel sorry to uh, uh, hear from you that you suffer a lot, sir. I feel yes, sorry. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Exactly. Yes, sir. We are we 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 like it is a fashion, sir. It is fashion. Teaching my fashion, sir. Fashion. That's why I totally without the audience, it's too difficult uh, to sing a song like that. Without the student, I handling so much of uh, all these things, the PowerPoint and all these things after the pandemic. After pandemic, I do I handling all the PowerPoint. and all the uh, search and all the related things sir but what is the reality is that they cannot go to the student school sir a commerce sir process sir to school is sir too difficult task but in college sir college sir government government college sir 
government college sir okay okay sir i was you were extremely handling very well sir but the reality is uh, when i as a professor i can uh, definitely sincerely attend your program okay. but what is the matter is the student uh, uh, sir sir Sir, in the initial stages, we thought that teaching profession will not suffer at all during uh, because of COVID. This was the mindset we we had in the starting of the COVID. But the situation has changed. Ah, yes, sir. And uh, uh, I should not talk more about this, sir, since because uh, it deals with the. official contributions of the institutions also but we have no other go sir a pandemic is pandemic all over the world first thing is we have to accept the reality that yes. this happens all over the world this happens to all the institutions this happens to all the teachers irrespective uh, school teacher or college uh, teacher it happens to all of us uh, definitely sir definitely sir sir neenga sonninga teaching is my passion apdi indru sir And the passion over the years, na, na, amala thatta veke po. Ah. Covid vandalu seri, tsunami vandalu seri, yenna vandalu seri, na teaching utu pogo matane solring lang sir. And the one issue na sir, passion, ninge solring passion. Ado matto na amala thatta veke de. Nariya pera vandhi the teaching in the seli ni thatta veche chudu na. It is not because of the comfort what we get in this profession. It is because of the passion. It is because of the motivation what we get from the students. நினைக்கிறேன் <laughs> <laughs> பட் பையனை உட்கார வச்சு ஏன் சொன்னே கிளாஸ் ஒழுங்கா அட்டன் பண்ண மாட்டேங்கிறான் சார் அதெல்லாம் பாக்குறப்ப தான் என்னடா அது பேத்தட்டிக் சுச்சுவேஷனா இருக்கு அப்படின்னு ஃபீல் பண்றேன் பிளேம் டோன்ட் பிளேம் எனி திங் இல்ல சார் நான் என்னோட கொஸ்டின் என்னன்னாங்க சார் நம்ம கொரோனாவை பிளேம் பண்ணி ஒண்ணும் பண்ண முடியாது அதை தான் நான் சொல்றேங்க சார் இப்போ கொரோனா இஸ் பியாண்ட் ஆன்ஸ் வி கேன் டூ எனி திங் வித் கொரோனா ப்ரொடெக்டட் அபார்ட் ஃப்ரம் தட் என்னன்னா சார் திஸ் இஸ் காமன் ஃபார் ஆல் வி ஹாவ் டு ஃபைண்ட் ஆல்டர்னேட்டிவ் வே சார் ஆக்சுவலா people. what i have done is that i have formed a small group called as best speakers club they are like military soldiers so we used to have discussion during saturday sundays when they don't have official class the i have selected students who oh, are yes. self motivated i feel happy when i do something for a small group of students since because i talk to all the 10 in the group i see them through video mode i used to interact them through video mode and i conclude that something is happening and i conclude that something is happening something i am doing as a teacher sir this is how i get satisfied in this profession sir we can't please everyone we can't teach things to everyone sir to form a small group sir let it be one or two talk to them daily and ask them to call you daily assign them task who does the task without any monitoring it gives us a kind of accomplishment at the end of the day so this is what we have to we can do especially during pandemic sir so we have to find alternative, you, alternative ways in which we have to make ourselves happy you prove as a leader yes sir 
Sir, you prove as a leader. You do things differently, sir. Thank you, sir. I'm happy listening uh, this word from an experienced professor, sir. This is a kind of a blessing from an experienced professor. Sir, any other uh, discussion, sir? Any other points you can add to me? Sir? Yes, ma'am. Uh, in fact, the people ha who are in the admin, like the principal, vice principal, or the HODs, uh, they have a bang from both the ways, from the management way also, and from the subordinates, superiors and subordinates. Like as we are the middle member, middle people who is a bridge between these two, and who who are the com uh, I mean uh, communicators between these two. So we are the ones uh, who get banged up every time. Because you have to convince to the management, the straight words can't be reflected to the subordinates, whatever the bombarding have been put on us. And at the same time, we can't uh, put the same words of the subordinates to our seniors, all, I mean, to our superiors also. So in the bo both the ways, we are the one. And at times you feel that, why should I take up this job? Yeah, it is better either I shift it downward or let me go it to the other way. Uh, so in such a situation, what we have to do, sir, like might be you also experienced, might be so many people over here might have experienced the same situation. It is a universal uh, scenario, man. What you have said is everyone, as you said, everyone would have encountered this. Being in between, everyone would have thought that why is that I have taken up this? I would have been a normal uh, professor instead of being an Sir, am I audible? You are now, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Ma'am, uh, the simple thing what we can do is that we can even we can add principal with us, ma'am. Even principal, uh, the uh, the principal needs to manage the HODs, faculty members with the management. So we used to since because he is pay he is paid more, he or she is paid more. The consequences will also be more, ma'am. So we can add principal with our uh, yeah, obviously, teams. sir. Even principal also. And in yes, fact, what the subordinates will think that as she, as he or she is earning more, so they have to take the responsibility and they have to do it. Uh, the, like very common word, they they say it. Uh, you earn more, so you work more. We are not getting that much. What you are getting? Yes, yes, ma'am. Of course, but there are people who are not. That I, I have seen people who are not ready to take up the task as the head of the department or uh, different uh, highest designations if they are even if they are paid more. By looking at the sufferings, they will not accept the responsibilities. Yes. They feel comfortable even less. Uh, it is out of context, ma'am. But what we can do is that we can make them understand we don't work for money. We don't do all this since because we are getting more than our subordinates. We are doing this since because the why plays a predominant role. Even if we are paid less, we are going to do the same thing. We have to make the team members understand that even if I am paid less, I am going to do the same thing. The true leaders, the resilient leaders, even to be frank, ma'am, I used to tell my students, I am getting paid for stepping inside the college, but I am not paid to getting inside the class. Yes, I need money to come inside the college, but I don't need money to get inside the class. Even if I'm not paid, I will talk to students. I will find the ways through which I can connect with the students. Since because once if the teaching is your passion, your passion, you are more passionate, passionate about talk, talking to the students, nothing can stop us. Institution can't stop us. Even the situations like Corona can't stop us. The technology can't stop us. We will find ways through which we will connect with the students. If I'm not going to talk to the college students, I will talk to the students in and around my uh, home. I will motivate them. I will teach them, which is not given in the textbooks. As a person, I don't believe that everything. What we have to read everything what is given in the textbook. We have to follow everything what is given in the textbook. 
if that is the case i i don't want to make this uh, political i feel bad students committing suicide because of neat i don't feel sad i won't i don't feel sympathetic towards such students whatever might be the defeat they should not have lost confidence they should have thought they should have felt about their parents it is not they should have uh, took up the attitude that it is not over until i win if that is the case they would not have committed suicide so we have to make our team understand who we are ma'am what we are working towards and we need to make them understand we are not dictating things for money we are dictating things for the betterment of the students so as i said ma'am we have to talk a lot we have to talk freely with the members we have to make them understand definitely as you said they will have a different notion about the head of the department or headmistress or headmaster whoever it is so we used to see principal in same sense no ma'am yeah, obviously sir we can't satisfy the whole set of people there might be some who disagree with us and so there are some who voluntarily agree with us ma'am uh, but i i don't go by uh, designations and, and i don't go by uh, hierarchies people should accept to us for the sake of why not for the sake since because i am the head of the department whoever gives whoever contributes to the why they have to accept we have to go by purpose and we should not go by the hierarchy ma'am so this is what i follow i insist people not to accept things since because i am the head of the department i insist them to accept if it is good for the betterment of the students we have no other go we have to accept but, but it is not that we have to insist them to do impossible things if the things are possible we can do it even if it is not done today we have to do it anyway yes ma'am any ma other points good evening sir very good evening sir hello yes sir yes sir you are audible sir sir i am dr hello, balaji sir, please go ahead you are audible yes sir yes sir yes sir sir to you sir yes sir i am i am in the field of teaching for the past uh, 22 years okay sir uh, maybe i am in, uh, playing some administrative role uh, at head of the department level so practically i find some uh, gap between the uh, generation that we have started our profession and the people who are uh, coming uh, freshly for uh, uh, teaching now uh, that means the for the past one or two years their attitude their uh, everything is entirely different so they are not that much uh, committed they are not accepting the responsibility they want more salary but they don't want to work that is our uh, mindset like that so uh, entirely it's very difficult to uh, tackle uh, this kind of people if you if you put more pressure a uh, pressure or you can give more advice as you said uh, like that means they will quit the job easily uh, they won't mind about that even we are uh, we, even we have completed uh, around 22 25 years of experience so we are uh, thinking and we are committed and uh, uh, time everything we are uh, spending uh, for the purpose of student community because we i i personally feel that the role of teacher is very important because we are uh, i used to say uh, to my students and my colleagues if engineer does a mistake the building will collapse civil engineer but if a teacher if a doctor does any mistake only one life will uh, go but if a teacher will uh, uh, do any mistake the entire national collapse we are the national builders in fact uh, the entire uh, future is in our hands so that is the responsibility that we are having in that in, in even in that age after 20 20 this uh, commitment this responsibility is not there in the uh, younger generation so this kind of teachers who are handling the students means uh, that, uh, that is the area where i am very much worried uh, actually definitely they want to create uh, 
good citizens of india no doubt in it so very difficult to tackle this kind of uh, things sir nowadays that that's my uh, uh, my practical experience uh, in fact yes, sir. i do agree with you sir what you have said is exactly right and we are facing this in all the institutions in all the areas sir so but uh, we don't have any other go we have to make it possible sir as i mentioned in the first point don't know how to do but surely i know that i'm going to do it you we can't turn the entire scenario upside down we have to inject them slowly we have to make them understand i hope i know that as you have mentioned that it is the toughest task to make people to do what is right is the toughest task but it is very easy to motivate people to do wrong things it is more easy when compared to the earlier one so Hello. 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 I will share the feedback link. Uh, Jagan sir, I am using the old link that you shared on the first day. Uh, just for you. no problem, no sir. Sir, Balaji sir, I I couldn't hear you. No, I am using the link that you have said uh, sent on the first day. Yes, yes, the link is same, but you have to choose the session on a different date, yeah. and I mean. date and session that, time, that might have been problem no sir but no no so i i will segregate based on the sessions and date the okay, time stamp is there i i will classify according to the date submitted fine sir fine and when you have the assessment don't forget and kindly remember your uh, register number as well that's the tomorrow only no sir yes sir tomorrow at 2:30 uh, based based upon the validation uh, function i will let you know how it goes sir but the assessment will start by 2:30 within any specific time period we have to complete our uh, about um, about it yes sir based upon the validation i let you know sir you, you be, just be prepared for the assessment okay okay because sometimes we make you know, traveling like that uh, short time asking okay at least have uh, a reserve time of 1 to 1 and a half hours sir maximum maximum okay, okay. how many questions sir okay. we'll let you know sir tomorrow Okay. Money Meghalaya, ma'am. Kindly, you can join.